The average matriculant to an MD school in the US has a 3.7 GPA. This is an A- average in some of the most difficult college courses that are often designed to weed students out. How can you achieve this GPA? In this video, I'll talk about how I did it and give you tips so that you can too. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to AV Med. My name is Adrian and I'm a third year medical student. Although your GPA is pretty unimportant for everything in your life that's not school, uh, if you wanna to go to medical school, having a high GPA is extremely important. I wanted to make this video to talk about how if you wanna to go to medical school, how you can focus on getting a high GPA. Pre-med courses can be extremely challenging, competitive, and really hard for no reason. I'm no stranger to these ridiculously hard exams. I went to UC Berkeley, which is famously known as a pre-med killer because there are so many hard courses with so many people in it, and many people drop out of being pre-med after the first year. I would often see people crying after exams because they were so hard, and honestly, a lot of them were, seemed to be ridiculously hard for no reason. So I know that many of you are facing these difficult exams right now, and I wanted to make sure that I can help give you the tools that you need in order to succeed. For this video, I'm gonna be going through my undergrad transcript. That way you can kind of see how I approached my course load um, and I will give tips along the way for how you can maximize your GPA. Let's take a look at my transcript. So looking back to fall of 2016, this is when I started off at UC Berkeley, you can see my course load and you see general chemistry with a lab and then you have math and you have a Scandinavian class which was just basically an English class. Um, so what you might notice here is that my course load is super light. I really only had three classes. And this is my first tip for all of you who are aspiring medical students, is to take a light course load, especially at first. Many bright students make the huge mistake of taking on a bigger course load than they're ready for. Many students who took a lot of AP classes in high school think that they can handle a lot and they take on a lot of college courses, but it's really a different game when you're at a big university such as UC Berkeley. So my advice is especially the first semester and possibly even the first year, take the absolute smallest course load that you can. Also make sure to keep extracurriculars and other commitments light so that you can really focus on your grades. If you wanna to go to medical school, having a GPA that is high is super important and having a low GPA is one of the biggest things that prevents people from actually getting accepted. So this first year, you should really be focusing just on your grades and it's great to have extracurriculars that keep you uh, kind of happy, especially things like joining clubs and making friends and I did that myself, but I, I didn't do anything high pressure like research or any sort of job and I really kept my schedule free so that I could spend a lot of time focusing on my grades. And you'll see that here in the second semester, we look at spring of 2017 and my course load was pretty small too, also only 13 units. Here we have uh, chemical structure and reactivity, which is just organic chemistry, and then another math class, and then again, Scandinavian, basically an English class. So I took the minimum course load my entire first year, and this really allowed me to get dialed in with what my studying style was like and how I could get good grades. And notice that even though I got straight A's my first semester and I felt good about this, I still didn't step up my course load to more than 13 units. So at this point, you may be looking at my transcript and thinking, oh, I must have just been naturally a good student, but actually that couldn't be farther from the truth. This brings me to my next point, and that is to get help before you need it. So anyone who's a college student, whether you're at a community college or a large university, is gonna have access to free tutoring. My school had a student learning center, and I know that pretty much every other school is gonna have some similar center where you can get free help with your classes. For me, I knew that chemistry was super difficult for me, and I had a lot of trouble with it in high school, so I started going to tutoring right away. I didn't wait until the first midterm to get help. Many people wait until they fail the first midterm or do poorly on the first midterm, and then they go and seek help, but by then it's already too late. If you get a really bad grade on one of these big tests, it's gonna make it very hard to get an A or an A minus in the class. So I highly recommend you do what I did, and that is to get help before you need it. That way you get that tutoring right away, and when the first test comes around, you can start off the semester on a strong foot. Okay, so let's look at my sophomore year. This is actually a semester where I made a mistake and you'll see why. So I have biology 1A, so that's just general biology. I have the lab with that, so biology with lab. And then I took organic chemistry. I didn't take the lab because I actually couldn't get it in my schedule that year um, or that semester. Um, and then I also have physics, so I'm taking three hard science classes here, which is way too much. And then I also took 
um, this elective in human biology, and this other class, the Bible and Western culture, which is actually really interesting. By now, you might be saying, why were you taking so many classes? And I also have that question for my past self. The reason that I signed up for so many classes is that because I was going straight through to medical school, I wanted to have all of my hard science classes done sophomore year so that I could study for the MCAT uh, the summer after my sophomore year. Uh, but this semester, despite, you know, you can look and see that I actually have really good grades this semester, but it was just really stressful. So that's another reason to not take on a course load that is too much. Um, it's really not healthy to be having such a high course load if it's gonna bring you so much stress. And this was definitely too much stress for, for me. Um, so this is like the biggest course load I had in all of undergrad. So yeah, I definitely don't recommend taking three hard sciences if possible, because most likely your grades will suffer. Um, here, my grades didn't, but uh, my mental health did. And the question you might be asking now is, well, how did you do so well taking so many science classes? And this brings me to my next point, and that is to start studying early. One of the best things that you can do to make sure that you have a good grade in a class is to review frequently so that when the midterm exam or the final exam comes around, you're not gonna have so much cramming to do. A simple way to do this, and this is actually what I did, is to every weekend make sure that you've reviewed all of the content for that week. So I would often start during the week. So let's say you have a lecture on Monday, I would start reviewing that on Tuesday um, and kind of keep reviewing as much as I could. Um, and at the very latest, by the weekend, I would want to make sure that I've reviewed all of the content for that week. And the key here is to find a way to actively review the content that you've been learning. If you're just copying down notes, it's not really testing your knowledge, so you really wanna find something that involves active review. One way to do this is by using active recall, such as using Anki flashcards, or doing practice problems is a really good way to do this because it makes you actually test if you understand the concepts. But yeah, this tip probably seems obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. So definitely make sure to start studying early. If you wait until only one week, out from the exam, whether it's the midterm or the final, to start studying, it's unlikely you're gonna do really well. Now let's look at the spring of my sophomore year. So here I had had a really hard time in the fall just because it was so stressful and I went back to a more normal course load. So here we have physics. So this is the second half of physics. You have to do a year of it. Here we have biochemistry. And then I also took a history class that I needed for a gen ed and then psychology. This semester was not that bad, uh, but biochemistry and physics are both pretty heavy topics. So they really did uh, take up a lot of time. So these were two really hard classes, and this brings me to my next tip for getting good grades, and that's to take a lot of practice tests. This is one of the best ways to make sure that you succeed on actual exams. In college, your professor will often give you an old exam um, that you can study from to study for the upcoming exam, and you can also get it from other student groups. There are many groups that kind of hoard exams from past years, or often you can find them online, and by doing practice exams before the actual exam, this is gonna give you a lot of active practice and it's gonna help you find your blind spots. You wanna make sure that at least seven days out from your exam, you're doing practice exams, but ideally more like 10. I would start doing it about a week and a half myself. It's really helpful to be taking these practice exams more than a week out if possible because it's gonna allow you to find your blind spots and it's gonna give you enough time so that you can go and see, seek help with these problems. If you're waiting until the week of the exam to do these practice tests and then you find out, oh, I have all these blind spots and then you try and get help, you're gonna have a lot harder time because all of the other students are gonna be doing the same thing. So overall, anytime you have access to practice tests before an exam, make sure that you take them, study them, get help with your blind spots and this is gonna help you be the most prepared on exam day. Here we can look at the fall of 2018. So I took a, it's a cellular and molecular neurobiology. I was a neuroscience major, so this was just an upper division biology class. Um, and then I had another one on genetics. Um, so I had kind of two hard science classes. And then I had my uh, organic chemistry lab because I wasn't able to get into it the last year. Um, and then an education class because I was actually an education minor. So by this point, I was pretty used to college classes. I had been taking classes for two years. I had kind of figured out how to do well. So I kind of breezed by this year. It wasn't too difficult. I was really used to it. Um, and that's one of the benefits of kind of getting your studying down early is it's gonna make your life easier later. And then looking at the spring, it was pretty similar. I took a public health class. I took another upper division class in neuroscience. So kind of two main hard classes. And then I took a classics class and then another education class. 
So pretty similar deal. And this brings me to my next piece of advice, and that is to hang in there. So for most pre-med majors, the hardest classes are actually the first two years because these are all of the actual hard science classes where they're gonna be weeding students out. So it's okay if you don't have a 3.7 GPA from your first two years because your upper division courses are most likely gonna be easier to get an A in and you can kind of recover some of your progress. So don't be discouraged if you don't have a 3.7 GPA right off the bat, but if you do have something like a 3.0 GPA, that is really gonna be hard to recover from. Um, so kind of gauge where you are your first two years. And if you aren't reaching your goals and make sure to reevaluate what you've been doing and figure out what you can change. And this brings me to my senior year. So over the summer between junior and senior year, I took this class, Chicano Studies. I think this was for my education minor. Um, that was really chill. In the fall of 2019, I actually barely had any courses. So I had, um, a neuroanatomy lab. This was my one hard science course this semester. And then I had an LGBT class for a gen ed. And then I had, let's see, an education class to finish my education minor. And then I took this class on aerospace. Um, it was like with the Navy, that was kind of a weird class. Um, but I think I just needed one more unit uh, so that I could graduate. And I actually only have a fall semester my senior year because I was able to graduate a semester early. I didn't have that much AP credit. I think I had 13 units. So a lot of people at Berkeley had a lot more than me. Um, but this just goes to show you looking back at my freshman year, even though I took the minimum units, I was able to make up for it later and still graduate early. And yeah, there's not much more to say here. During this senior fall semester, I was applying to medical school. So grades were kind of on the back burner because I was already getting medical school interviews and I knew that this last semester of grades was not really gonna be that consequential for my future. So kind of taking a step back and looking at my grades throughout the four years, overall I had a 3.9 GPA. Um, which is above that 3.7 range. I think 3.7 is a good goal to shoot for just because if you have at least that or above it, it's gonna make you competitive to get accepted to medical school. There you have it. That's my undergrad transcript. I hope it can help you kind of look at your own future and plan out how you're gonna get a 3.7 GPA or higher so that you can join me in medical school. I hope these tips can be helpful for all of you in undergrad trying to get a good GPA. I know how stressful it can be, so make sure to uh, not make some of the same mistakes that I did taking on too much and overwhelming yourself. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below if it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.